Hello YouTube, uh, welcome to another video. Um, today's one's gonna be spread out over a few days, so if my attire changes at all, you'll know why. Uh, shouldn't do actually, because I'm at work. Should just be my work clothes. Anywho, uh, so the last thing I've got to do to the midget before taking it home, second to last thing I've got to do to the midget before taking it home is my fuel system. So as I've told you in previous videos, fuel tank is rusty, uh, it keeps clogging up fuel filters, it's giving me some running issues. Well, I'll show you what we've got. We have a new fuel tank, a nice shiny, nice shiny swell pot. It's like a, a miniature fuel tank between the actual fuel tank and the engine. And the idea is that this will hold an amount of fuel. So if I'm on a track day or I'm just driving, and I go around roundabouts or corners or something a bit fast. Uh, because this has a section of fuel in it, the engine will still run. Uh, it's a common problem with old cars. Because the fuel tanks don't have baffles in them, uh, if you go around a roundabout, all the fuel sloshes to one side and then the pump is just sucking air. So you end up with the engine sort of struggling and not running on fuel. So that'll fix that problem. Uh, in order to use that it needs to be supplied by a another pump so this is just a some adapters there this is a something on the cheaper side um this is about 12 pounds it's just a low pressure pump that i can mount somewhere in the car um now this all this is going to do is take fuel from the standard tank from the standard pickup in the tank uh to the swell pot so the shiny swell pot, I was originally going to mount under the bonnet, uh, open bonnet, be a nice shiny bit on display. The battery was going to be moved to the boot. Uh, due to time constraints, I'm not doing that now. So the idea for that swell pot then now, uh, MG kindly put all this bracketry in the back. The fuel pump can go anywhere. Um, I've got to obviously drill a hole and put a grommet in for the fuel lines to come up and then to go back out. So, first thing I've got to do is move all this crap out. Um, quite simple with YouTube and editing, because I can just go, there you go, it's all falling on the floor. The wonders of editing. Uh, right, so, swell pot then. <coughs> Been having a bit of a think. So that's gonna go, that will go in there, like so. Fits quite nicely in there. A uh, low pressure pump will come up in here somewhere and then I can T-piece, T-piece? I can drill a hole, you can get some little adapters uh, to feed the overflow into the filler neck, that's nice and easy. And then my thinking is I can make some kind of board to section all this off to protect it from anything sliding around in the boot. And then in the future, when I probably when I put, rebuild my spare engine with the turbo, put that in it i move the battery to this side um put the battery on there it's a nice small enough battery make a nice clamp over that and uh, that leaves space for an air filter so i haven't got to use a bit of rag <laughs> seems to do the job um, okay so i've been working on the car on and off a few uh, mornings this week uh, but not really made much progress um so but now uh, I'll sit down bank holiday Monday. Uh, you can see the swell pot is in. And it's all mounted in quite nicely there. Now I was going to use this old facet pump. Um, two reasons I haven't. Number one, it's quite a large unit and mounting it looked like it might have been a bit of an issue. There's not really anywhere underneath the car. Ideally, it needs to be below the fuel tank. The fuel tank's already the lowest point of a car. So my other idea was to mount it sort of either here or here, um, but space, yeah, not great. Uh, so I can't with another option, thanks to Mr. Amazon. So this is a brushless instruction manual. This is a brushless um, pump. There's a mounting bracket, a load of bits of fuel pipe and clips. There we go. Um, so this should be able to lift from much higher up um, and be a lot quieter. <coughs> Hopefully that's not a concern. Um, yeah, and my idea for that is I can now mount that pretty much 
anywhere within, they reckon about 30 centimeters above the bottom of the tank, which for us actually brings us to about here. So any of this metal work here, if I put some riv nuts into, the sh into that chassis leg there and go on here, because then I can just cover this section off here, then all will be good. Now, in order to get the fuel lines through the bulk, I need three. Um, so I need a feed from the fuel tank. Um, I need a feed back out of, a larger feed, out of the soil pot uh, to go down to the high pressure pump. And I need a return line uh, back into the swell pot from the engine. Um, so what I've bought are these. So these are basically, I think they call them barb ends. You push the hose on the end, put a little clip on, makes them watertight, fuel tight. Um, and these, where's my nut there? <coughs> this nut unscrews, so you can drill a hole the size of that thread, feed it through the bulkhead, wind the nut back on, put a washer on either side. Um, there we go, put a washer either side just to hold it. Um, and then all we've got to do is drill a hole for that. We haven't got to worry about putting grommets in or making, yeah, any other way of doing it. <clears throat> so this seems like the simplest way. And as this section here of the car is pretty clear, or that it's in a good place that the fuel hose can come off and bend around without getting in the way of something like the handbrake cables, rods, handbrake rods run across the back of the axle there, uh, or the axle or anything else. Um, yeah, and then we can just do feed it through there. So I've got two of them that are eight mil, and I have got, actually, they came in packs of two. Um, and I actually thought I'll probably use one for the, from the return of the swell pot back into the tank. Um, what I want to try and do is come into this filler neck, which I've seen somebody else do before and it worked quite well. Basically you've got two packs of the 8mm and two of the larger ones. So these ones will come off the bottom, they'll be the feed for the high pressure pump. So um, yeah, looks like I've got three holes to drill and figure out where I'm going to mount this pump. Alright, so holes are drilled. Um, you can see I've done a really poor paint job, uh, just, just to protect the inside where you drill it. Obviously you're going to get clean metal and um, <clears throat> it's quite a susceptible area there, potentially for dirt and water, seeing as it's quite close to the wheels. Um, speaking of wheels, what I've done to help myself out, I did suddenly realise how am I going to tighten that up from underneath and from on top. So wheel off and uh, you can see the holes up there quite nicely. Um, so the idea is, if I can get you a bit closer, the idea is that this hole here will be the feed from the tank and I'll explain why in a moment. So we'll have the feed come up here straight into there. This larger hole is the feed to the fuel pump which will come off of this thicker rubber hose here. Um, again I'm hoping, all I'm going to do is p-clip them up there um, so that it doesn't interfere with anything. And this one on the end here is the return, which at the moment is that one there. So we've already got the hoses there. That's not going to be too big an issue. Um, but yeah, the fact that I've taken the wheel off means I can get my arm under there and hopefully get something on there. You know, just hold a spanner on or something. So I can tighten them up. Uh, I've got a couple of washers for each side. Um, the larger one, for example. Uh, I've got some of these plastic washers. So go on there, that way around. Uh, I will probably put the nut at the bottom side from underneath. Uh, I'll tell you why, if it was to come loose, that will still sit in the hole. Gravity will hold that in. Is the paint dry? Yeah. Yeah, if the nut comes loose, that will still sit in there. If you do it from underneath, and that comes loose, it's likely to just fall out. Top tip my granddad told me, years and years and years ago. Um, he was actually questioning something on his car at the time. Uh, I think it was on his Vauxhall suspension bolt or something. Uh, from the factory, Vauxhall fitted it from the bottom. It goes up into the subframe. <clears throat> the reason for that was there was no room to get the bolt out from the top without removing the subframe. He didn't really notice that. So, uh, yeah, I think he, I can't remember if he actually did take it up with Vauxhall or not. <laughs> oh, grandparents, hilarious. Uh, so, I'm going to get these in then, uh, and then I will plumb in, I'll show you how to plumb in this side of it, 
and then I can get on with replacing the fuel tank. All right, that was easier than I thought. They're in there nicely, um, nice and tight. Like I said, this one here is gonna be the feed from the tank, from the new tank. That'll come, that'll be the feed from the outlet, from the uh, swell pot. It'll go down to the high pressure pump. And um, this one here is the return, which will come back to, probably that one, I would have thought. Don't think it matters which way around these two are. Next thing I need to do then is, uh, actually probably next thing we need to do is mount the new pump. The reason I was gonna go with this one here as the feed is that I can mount that quite nicely there and it's if you ever look it's kind of in line with um that outlet anyway and then we can loop back from this end to whichever one we want here and then the route's clear for the other two just to come up onto where they need to go so oh yeah, it does have out on there so that's what i was looking for whether it has out and in um, so this needs to be mounted, like I said, pretty much ideally within 30 centimetres of the bottom of the tank, um, which anywhere below this line here is. Um, it also needs to be, oh, also says flow on the side. It also needs to be ideally at sort of a, normally I think they say about 30 to 45 degree angle. Oh, there's also a little filter. It filters fuel going into that pump. And obviously we've got the main filter, which will filter the fuel coming out of the high pressure. Um, wanted one before the high pressure pump, but... 12 mil or half inch hose is a strange size to find filters for as it turns out so but not to worry it's been fine so far um all right so this mess of hoses is now all in uh, so we've got feedback to the tank so i use one of those through the bulkhead fitting things um in drill the hole in my spare fuel hose <coughs> and i've gone i fitted it from the bottom up so this is actually the nut on this end um that's because the hose will stop the nut coming all the way and done. So if it did decide to work loose, like if it was the other side, the nut could fall into the tank, which obviously we don't want. Uh, this is the return line from the engine. This is the uh, feed to the high pressure pump that will then go down to the engine. And this little one at the bottom here is the feed coming up from the tank, which goes into our little lift pump and then into the middle one on there. Now, I am fully aware that I have a lot of joints here. Obviously, all four of these, um, one on here, there's the pump ones and the fittings there. So I'm hoping that we're not gonna get any fuel leaks. Uh, probably, chances are quite high. Um, I've got to wire the pump in yet, just positive and negative. Next job then, take the tank out, put my new tank in, and the, feed from the high pressure pump I can just cut that and join it on the other end of that same with the uh, return line and then all I've got to do is run a new bit of hose up to the feed wire it up try it out you see I've actually got some nuts missing I don't know if you can see that there uh, but, uh, there's, there's nuts all the way around and once again I've got another one missing there so I have to try and find I've got I think I've got some spare nuts for this some uh, imperial sizes so Get them on there i might also get a uh, some washers on them the tank is quite close to the spring hanger so it's something to watch It. Uh, it's the wrong tank. This one, the old one, has a bolting cinder. This one has the one that ones with the lock print. Mine's a bolt in. It's fit this tank anyway. Uh, we'll just tape up the hole. Tie this tape for now. Uh, I'll order the right cinder, and then I'll just drop the tank down and um, do the cinder.
Okay, so we're all pretty much plumbed in. So we've got our feed there into the uh, low pressure pump. Feed down to the high pressure pump and the return line next to it. I'm quite happy with how tidy that is. Um, sorry for anyone that that annoys. I can't bother to cut that off at the moment because that means walking all the way to my toolbox. Right, that is all in. Tank's in, all the wiring is in. This is obviously temporary. I had a great idea what to do with the holes in the dashboard for the uh, heater, pipe and the clutch cable. Um, I'm going to put a toggle switch in to run the fuel pumps. The ground for the fuel pump, I've literally just ground it out on the screw that we've used to fit it in. So yeah, all that's left, put fuel in and I'll use my assistant to put the ignition on and we'll check for leaks. Okay, so we're ready to look for leaks. I've uh, got Selena over by the ignition. So if you can put the ignition on, Selena. Not so far up here, we're all right. Nothing underneath. All right, off. So I think all that's left then is we'll start her up. You want to do the honors? Start her up and uh, see if she runs. Make sure it's in neutral, although the back wheel's off the ground, doesn't matter. Well, we're running. And no leaks. Wow. No drips on the floor either. I call that a result. Yeah, probably do another video taking it home so you can all watch me break down in style because I'll probably miss something off. But thank you very much for watching. I know it's a long video, so to those who made it to the end, thank you very much. Hope you hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.